There's a light in the sky Rising in the air There's a feeling so strong Hello, thanks for joining us right here on the House of Wellness. My name's Luke Darcy. Always great to be sitting alongside Joe Stanley. Welcome to you, Joe. Hi. Luke Hines with us as always, but welcome, Hinesy. Big special welcome back to Rachel Finch. Oh, How are you, Finch? Right. I miss you guys. Yes, we missed you too. I missed you so much oh. that I named this pillow Rachie and I hugged it for two long weeks. Okay, I, that's heard a little weird. I heard there were some awkward <laughs> hugs. I had a ball overseas. I was in New York and LA for about two weeks. I'm just launching my Body by Finch app overseas. Loved it. Just did some media, some interviews, some live workouts. Uh, we did, I think, about 20,000 steps per day. Oh, my goodness. That was pretty decent. I took Violet with us. She had a ball, <laughs> came to every one of our appointments. It was so good. And um, just discovered some new healthy hotspots. Take no, us next great. time. Fantastic. No <laughs> surprise that Rachel's gone global. We're looking forward to hearing more about Body by Finch and the new app. That sounds uh, very exciting. But you've... Uh, you've Bury the lead, Rach. She caught up with uh, Drew Barrymore. Tell us about that. What an absolute highlight. So she was in Sydney launching her um, makeup brand, Flower Beauty. It's been launched in the US for about eight years, but it's now available exclusively in Chemist Warehouse in Australia now. So very exciting to chat to her. I think she's just this real-life superwoman. You know, mm. she does it all, acting, directing. She's a businesswoman, a mum, but most of all what I loved, she's so down to it. And work. she's not just... Josie Grossy anymore, <laughs> that's for sure. We spoke about <laughs> Josie Grossy. <laughs> <laughs> we'll stick around for that interview shortly. I can't wait for that, Rachel. That's going to be fantastic. But uh, a day where chocolate consumption goes up uh, not far around the corner. Jo, you a big chocolate fan? Oh, my gosh. I live for dark chocolate. I Same. absolutely love it. Yum. But do you know, I usually like to eat it, Das, but you can actually... Wear chocolate. Ooh. Did you know that? Wow. <laughs> yeah, wait and see. All right, okay. It gets a little messy, but it's super fun. I can't wait for that story as well. A bit <laughs> later on. chocolate. Uh, and Heinz, you're going to be testing out one of your gut health healing specialties uh, on the show, which is uh, going to be That's good fun. That's exactly right, guys. Look after your gut, and we'll talk about that later for sure. Okay, but first, let's take a look at what happened when Rachel Finch caught up with the superstar, Drew Barrymore. I've got that on. Well, I'm definitely going to go in for the highlighter right yep. now. I started Flower Beauty eight years ago, and I started it because I was starting my family and having two daughters, and I had just come from being co-creative director at CoverGirl for seven years. And I love storytelling, and I love girls and womanhood and femininity. Um, I've been in a makeup chair since I was a kid. What so I do like, you prefer top of cheek or yeah, actually top of cheek? But what I like about this is, you know, depending you have your more gold, your pinky or your pearl, mm -hmm. sometimes I just go all the way across, but sometimes depending on the lipstick or outfit I'm wearing, I, I like that you have the choice of color. By Flower of Beauty, we say beauty is for everyone. Um, I've never really been drawn to like the austere, unrealistic, you know, scenarios that sometimes makeup companies portray for women. So I think that I've just always wanted to speak to myself, speak to my daughters, speak to other women in a way that feels like who you are, not something or someone else, is where the story begins. Sometimes yeah. I even just go right with my finger. Okay. Straight on the top. And then just... Because that helps it just pop. Yeah, and Isn't then you beautiful? dab it and it just rests on the little... It's bow. all the little tr tricks of the trade. Five minutes to get out the door. You're in front of the mirror. What do you do? I usually call it the two-minute makeup. Um, and it's a little concealer under the eyes, around the corners of the nose. Don't forget the eyelids. They are red and full of capillaries too. So a little eyelid, a little nose, a little under eyes. Um, and then a lipstick, and then dot it on your cheeks, just go uh-uh, and all of a sudden you've got a more monochromatic tonal skin look and a great little pop of color on your face. Bam! What are some of your favorite makeup hacks? I really like taking moisturizer to sort of reinvigorate my foundation and then do spot treatments with concealer if I want to even it out. I think 
putting less makeup on sometimes um, can make you look a little more alive and natural rather than re-caking it on. I mean, you could burn the end of a cork of a wine bottle and create cull eyeliner. You could take a berry right off a fruit plate and create like a stain for your lips. Lots of girls put sugar and lemon together and create an exfoliant. Beauty hacks are endless. I think that also putting pure, the purest form of vitamin E oil or olive oil you can, can find, putting a little of that, that will make you look as fresh as a daisy. We should get a face mask on me. On me, Derek. Are you ready to go for that? In one pack, you actually get three. Wow! Nice. Good value. I am such a fan of sheet masks. I I do at least three a week because mm -hmm. I don't have time mm. or money like to go to well, facialist. I know for myself when I feel my best emotionally and spiritually, even physically, is when I behave well. Nothing makes me feel more attractive on the inside and the outside. So for me, I could put all the makeup on in the world, but if I haven't acted in accordance to my own standards, I beat myself up a lot about it. And if I had a day where I did act with some form of grace, I'm like, oh, thank God. <laughs> She was so good. She was so happy to just put that mask on. It's amazing. It goes straight over your makeup. It freshens your face. She was such a good sport. So real and so honest about who she is. Totally owns her past and mm. how she's reinvented herself and how much happier she is in her person now. Definitely. Very yeah. much about that female empowerment, mm. which I loved. Um, yeah, one of, a highlight for me. So mm. Amazing. Well, Rach, great to have you back uh, from the States. Catch up with Drew Barrymore. She's been absolutely on fire. Make sure you stay with us because you don't want to miss Joe's indulgence like we've never seen it before. <laughs> I've never done anything like this either. It's coming up next here on the House of Wellness. Welcome back to the House of Wellness. Uh, everyone loves a little bit of chocolate, Joe. Yes. Looking forward to your story shortly. <laughs> and Heinz, are you like a healthier version? In fact, you made some for us the other day. Mate, I love to indulge and I really indulge in healthy chocolate. But a lot of people ask me from time to time, what actually makes chocolate healthy? And it's simply one that actually uses raw cacao. So what we're looking for is one without all the fillers, like the processed sugars and the milks in there. So the other thing, that the cacao, when it's heated and treated, it actually loses its health properties. So we want to make sure that we're celebrating raw cacao. Now, speaking of raw cacao, it's rich in magnesium mm. and is one of the highest plant-based sources of magnesium that you can actually get. And I tell you what, Gerald, you can vouch for me on this one, buddy. Yeah, well, I can, Luke, but it's so complicated, isn't it? Why can't we just leave chocolate alone? <laughs> actually, 80% uh, cacao yeah. um, actually helps you live longer, Ooh. helps lower your blood pressure because of the polyphenols and it reduces inflammation. Uh -huh. Brilliant stuff. Well, Gerald, I love hearing that chocolate can be good for me. I like it in all its forms, but I'm fairly old-fashioned because I'm one of those people who prefers to eat it. <laughs> 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 but I could be in the, in the minority. Chocolate's one of those guilty pleasures that can creep up on you. Before you know it, you've gone from one row to half a block. It has such a pull on us that there's always someone who finds another use for it. And it's always related to indulgence. Hi, how are you? Hello. I am here today for a chocolate massage. Yes. Now, I'm not really that into massages, but I'm definitely into chocolate. So I'm going to give it a go. Are you comfortable? So comfortable. Okay, so the scrub removes the top layer, so my skin is prepped, ready to suck up all that chocolate. I'd be happy to consume it the more conventional way, but I'm here now, so smear away. This way, always fight it with free radicals. It smells very beautiful. Yeah, nice, isn't it? Mm. The aroma of the chocolate is supposed to release those happy endorphins laying dormant and help you relax. It's also making me crave a lint ball. 
it really does feel like you're icing me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it feels like the sort of thing you'd be sharing with someone you love very much, perhaps. And Yoko's lovely. <laughs> She does a very good job of covering me in chocolate. <laughs> yeah, I, I think maybe, uh, for me, chocolate is for eating. Mm. From a packet. And as we know, chocolate from a packet comes in three different flavours, milk, white and dark. But hold on to your sugar cravings because there's a brand new category, Ruby chocolate. And this is what it looks like. Ruby by name and naturally by colour. This is what it looks like covering an entire cake. Yum! And this is award-winning pastry chef Kirsten Tibbles, a master craftsman in the very tricky art of creating this rather mysterious chocolate. Traditionally, cocoa beans have a brown interior, so only a few of them actually have that red interior. So they're having to separate those beans with a red interior when they find them and process them individually. Where previously, the red beans have just been mixed in with the brown ones, so we haven't actually seen any of that beautiful pink colour. It's quite a job separating all those beans. In fact, it's taken 10 years of R&D to perfect the process which is why there's so much secrecy around how it's made. They haven't actually revealed how they process the beans to retain that beautiful ruby colour. It's so exciting to have a new chocolate to work with, to discover new recipes and make new creations. We've had white milk and dark for as long as I've been alive, so it's absolutely brilliant to have one that's new and unique. It's the world's first new chocolate variety in 80 years developed by Calibort, Belgium's prestigious chocolate makers. It's acidic, it has a berry taste, but it's a little bit sour as well, so it's a berry sort of yogurt flavour. But you've heard it here first, this is just the beginning. There's a ruby chocolate Mark II on its way. They're trying different things all the time with chocolate and coming out with new and exciting recipes and ingredients, but ruby really takes a cake if you like. <laughs> mm, that Ooh. does look beautiful and I think a lot tastier than that massage It'd be was. <laughs> interesting to know if that uh, ruby chocolate actually is higher in polyphenols yeah. and better for you. It doesn't matter, it's chocolate. Exactly. Just eat it, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> 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 and I certainly would rather stick to eating chocolate than wearing it. I don't know about you, Darth. I, I don't think the chocolate massage has sold all that well, Joe. Oh, <laughs> look, it was awesome. so delightful. Cocoa was amazing. The massage itself was beautiful, but yeah, Not I just... You. Well, I mean, I don't want to be wrapped in foil and put a bow on me. <laughs> <laughs> as, a, as a gift, it didn't feel right. Fair enough. <laughs> Get ready to give in to the dark side with my decadent mini molten chocolate lava cakes. But don't worry, my recipe is nutritious as well as being delicious. We'll start by combining chopped dark chocolate and virgin coconut oil in a small pot over low heat, stirring until melted. While it's cooling, mix four eggs with honey or maple syrup until they're thick and creamy. Fold in the chocolate and add Biogland organic beetroot powder. This naturally sweet superfood is loaded with nitrates, folate and vitamin C for added immunity and energy. Then spoon the batter into prepared oven-proof cups or ramekins and bake for 10 to 15 minutes until just set. Then crack them open and indulge in the gooey goodness. Welcome back to the House of Wellness. And Joe, I can't tell you the amount of couples that I know that are trying to have a baby and can't. It's, it's quite devastating. It is, Rachel. And you know, the thing about it is it's always a surprise and quite a shock when you realise that you're one of those couples that struggle. Because obviously, until you try, you mm. really have no idea. And I'm very blessed to have one beautiful daughter, Willow, who I got pregnant naturally with. But it took a very long time. And I didn't realise that that was an alarm bell. Mm. And so that when I went on to have, well, try to have our 
our second, I discovered that actually I'm one of those women who struggles with infertility. And we've had many failed IVF cycles and, you know, the heartache really? of lost pregnancies. We tried oh. with an egg donor as well, still no luck. And now I've realised that it's not going to happen. And that is devastating. And all of that could have been avoided if I had sought to understand my reproductive health earlier. But no one ever encouraged me to do that. Mm, I think it's that communication, it's that support, and you just really never know mm. what people are going through. And women wanting a uni degree, a career, a house, and a great partner before starting a family means women generally are having babies later in life. But with a woman's fertility on a downward spiral after the age of 35, waiting too long can be a gamble. Freezing eggs empowers women Women to make the choice when they're ready. And one Australian pioneer is helping make that dream a reality for thousands. I am called the fertility queen um, and I think that's come along just because I do things a little bit differently. Fertility specialist Dr Lynn Burmeister doesn't fit the stereotype of your average doctor. I'm trying to create a very positive vibe when the patient walks in. Patients are often very nervous and anxious and being told that you may not be able to have a baby is one of the worst things to hear. So when they come in, I want them to see the beautiful pink. I want them to feel relaxed. I want them to feel loved and nurtured. And that's why I've got a lot of positive affirmations around the room as well. She's lost count of the number of babies she's helped create. It numbers into the thousands and many are women who had babies as they reached their 40s. I look at the whole picture of a person and the couple as well, and I try and develop a recipe that will help them achieve a pregnancy. So often they've seen other doctors and they've had lots of IVF elsewhere, and then I might just find one little thing that may have been missed. Hi Jenna, how are you today? Hi Dr Lynn. One big change she's seen in her practice is the number of younger women choosing to have their eggs frozen. From four women a week a year ago to an average of 20 a week today. The main reason women freeze their eggs is because they don't have a suitable partner. So rather than waiting to find the suitable partner and settling for Mr Wrong, they come to see me to freeze their eggs. But while plenty of single women are taking action, there's also a lot of women who are completely unaware that their chances of getting pregnant decline with age. It's almost when they come to see me, they're in a panic and it's almost like, oh my goodness, I forgot to have a baby sort of panic. And sometimes I'm seeing them a bit too late. So if we can get the message out to women that they need to check their fertility because it does start declining, our peak eggs are when we're in our early 20s. So by the age of 27, they should be really getting their egg bank checked just to make sure it's on track. But also if it's not on track, then they've got that opportunity to freeze their eggs. While advances in technology can increase a woman's chance of becoming pregnant, Lynn knows she can't help everyone, but she certainly gives it a red hot go. I get up out of bed to come to work to help people and fulfill their dream. Having a baby is the most magical day of your life and helping people who can't have babies is amazing. When I see them coming with their babies and all the photos they send me and the beautiful cards, it's the most rewarding thing. I could not imagine ever doing another job. Oh, that is so beautiful. And there's nothing new about freezing your eggs, but it's fair to say that it became a very hot topic when reality star Sarah Rosa firstly opened up on national TV about her heartbreak of losing twins and then, six months later, single and almost 40 years of age, announced that she'd frozen her eggs so that she could become a mother one day. Welcome, Sarah. Thank Thanks you for sharing me. your story. It's Thank incredibly you. personal and I'm sure very painful. You know what? It's something that a lot of women go through. Yeah. Um, and it hit me like a bolt out of the blue as the little package we just saw. Mm. All of a sudden I was like, hang on, I need to do this. Yeah. And oh my God, I am 40. So Dr Lynn said in, in that story that finding a suitable partner can be a reason that women feel that they need to do this yes. and the difficulty in that. Was that your reasoning? Yeah, you know, I, I had very similar, you know, response where it was work and career, but of course, you know, thinking that the partner that I was with was the guy that was mm. going to be the guy and it didn't happen that way, so. Can you talk us through the process and share what exactly it, it involved? Yeah, you know, when I first went into this, I had thought about 
freezing my eggs for many, many years, uh, always having in the back of my head wanting to do it. But then all of a sudden I thought, right, I need to do it now, not really knowing much about it. But it involves having, you know, injections, daily injections, blood tests, scans, and you just don't even know if you're actually going to be able to mm. harvest any eggs even at that point. Yeah, and it's an incredible emotional roller coaster. Your hormones are going crazy yes. and, you know, the people <laughs> in your life have to be very patient with you. Yes. Very, very, very gentle, yes. I think. But has it alleviated that fear for you? Oh, it was amazing. And I'm so grateful that I've done it now because I do feel empowered. I feel, you know, really happy that I've done every single thing possible to check off my list to make sure that, you know, that the steps have been taken to get the baby that I want to have one day. What would you say now, Sarah, to your 25-year-old self? Oh, my God. <laughs> uh, to my 25-year-old self, you know, as that package said, you know, around 27, check mm. in and find out. Nobody's telling women this information. Absolutely. And I think I... that should make it a part of your reproductive health as soon as you hit your 20s. Just yeah. go and find out so that yes. you're armed with that knowledge. Well, they do tests for, you know, your colon. They send you the free little yes. kit in the mail and things like that. So, you know, women all of a sudden having a shock to find out, my gosh, I need to do this and can I still do this? Mm. And also I think maybe planning for it because it's not cheap. Yes, yeah. so, you know, it's something that you do have to set aside some money for, you know, average sort of cost, I suppose, um, at all different clinics is usually between five and $10,000 for, mm. for most places, I'm assuming, so. So what are your plans then, knowing that you have these beautiful little eggs <laughs> sitting there waiting for you, what is your plan moving into the future? Are you going to wait to find a partner or have you set yourself a deadline for that? Hopefully I'd love to find a partner and do it the old fashioned way and, you know, have a baby the normal old-fashioned way but if that doesn't happen then um, or look even if I do meet a partner you know we still may have trouble so my mm. need to utilize mm. those eggs with his sperm um, if I don't find the partner I'm going off to the sperm bank <laughs> <laughs> to you. <laughs> I think that's wonderful. I've got many friends who have kids who've had them that way yeah. and they're beautiful children and they're very happy families. Yes, yeah. And I imagine that you have had a lot of women reach out to you oh, because you've shared your story. Tens of thousands of women and men as well have reached out of what a you know a process it is to go through and, and how heart-wrenching, you know, because everybody that wants to have a child really will do everything possible to have a child. And the accessibility of it, you know, is it easy for people to just find these clinics and reach out? There's a lot of them these days, you know, and obviously I encourage people to source out reputable ones. Mm. Um, and I was really happy where I went. Um, but, you know, it's one of those things where it's something that you want to do, do your research, make sure you, you're fully armed with as much knowledge as possible. And I think really the message there is to plan ahead. Mm. Yes. Because you never know what might be down oh. the track for you. Thank you so much, Sarah. Oh, my pleasure. My absolute pleasure. Um, so fertility treatment can be an expensive process, which is why it's good and a good idea to have private health insurance to help save on some of the costs. But with the latest federal government reforms to health insurance, I admit I'm a bit confused about what actually those changes mean. So we'll find out more after the break. <laughs> Welcome back to the House of Wellness. More than half of all Aussies, Joe, that's 13.5 million people, have private health insurance, but many of us don't actually understand what we're getting for our money or what we're actually covered for. Here to shed some light on the headache that can be health insurance, our man from behind the health bar, Gerald Quigley. Welcome to you, Gerald. Thanks, Dust. Now, uh, Gerald, on the 1st of April, some pretty significant changes came into the health insurance system. What are they? Look, many people would be aware of the first of these changes, which is essentially a four-tier system where the basic bronze, silver, gold setup is really designed to help us pick what we need most. Now, each uh, of these has a, has a mandate to give us protection of all the way through. The insurance companies have tried their best to try and make this simple. But look, our takeaway message, and we can discuss, this is a serious issue because it costs money to be mm. insured. We, we just need to understand what's involved. Now, do you all understand what well, you're... What I do understand is that I have those four tiers available to me, yes. but I don't know what's been removed from those four tiers. The biggest change has been the removal of 17 of the complementary modalities, and this mm. has caused a bit of a storm, unfortunately. And the removal was based on evidence that essentially is now considered old evidence, Joe. So things like Tai Chi and yoga and Pilates and herbal medicine, these things have been included in these extras package for a long, long, long time. And 
all the evidence was presented and that actually was enough for the government to say, well, fine, let's take those things out, has caused a ruckus. Do you agree, Gerald, that those things should have been taken out? No, I don't, Rachel. I think it's really important that, that if we're going to be basing things on the latest evidence, and that's now happening, then common sense would say let's examine all the evidence, including up to date, mm. and then make a decision. Because it is a personal choice. So of those 17, there would be some that people probably won't use. But at least give people the option. Mm. So do other people share your concern and what's being done about it? When the decision was pretty well formalised, Heinze, about 13,500 people made contact with their local members of parliament. Yeah. And this has caused, in fact, the politicians to take a bit of a review and say, well, hang on, we need to maybe take a look at this again. So, in fact, in the middle of the year, there's another review of the review. Mm -hmm. How silly is that? <laughs> so they're reviewing the whole thing again because maybe some decisions were too hastily made. And I understand that there are members of the uh, medical industry who are in support of the alternative modalities, such as Karen Phelps. Yes, there are. Yes. Yeah. And the, we call these people, very highly trained people, mm. integrative medical practitioners. Mm. They currently are being uh, looked at as to whether they should be able to prescribe these things. So there is, in fact, uh, a public inquiry going on about that at the moment. So it is becoming complicated. The important thing is for all of us, we get involved, mm. make sure we are covered for exactly what we need, and then we make appropriate decisions. Because I'm assuming after the 1st of April, I might have lost some things from my cover that yeah. I'm not aware of. Quite easily. Mm. Wow. Quite and easily. people like me who don't have cover at all, what, do, what should we consider? Well, you need to... You're a young bloke and you're single, so you need to actually take a look and see what... Insurance is that. I, insurance mm. is insuring against the unpredictable. OK. You're an unpredictable sort of a bloke, bloke so, <laughs> so <laughs> I don't know how you get insurance. The but answer you... is don't get sick. <laughs> yeah. OK, yeah. OK. He looks pretty healthy, yeah, our man Hines. I think he's going to be OK. If you're sitting there watching the House of Wellness today and you're at home, this is confusing. Yes. It's a lot of money. It's, it concerns my family. What should you be doing right now, Jim? You look at what you're covered for, uh, Das, in all of your private health insurance. Exactly. Write it all down. You perhaps look, have a look over the last few years of what you've called on from a private health insurance thing. You then look at the ages of your kids. Yours are into teenagers now, so there's the opportunity to, to look at their lifestyle. But every single one of us is different. You've just got to make sure you're covered for the unpredictability. Thank you, Gerald. It's a complex area, but uh, Gerald giving you some good messages there. To stay in top form and hopefully not have to go through the headache of a claim, heinz has got something bubbling away in the kitchen that could seriously help. Stick around. You're going to catch up with that right after the break. Welcome back. Now, Heinz, you've been telling me all week you've had an absolute gut full. What's going on, mate? Mate, that's exactly right. <laughs> Last week we talked about food waste and my appreciation of the nutrients that come from meat. So it seems only right that I put my money where its mouth is and turn a bunch of old bones into good gut. Apologies to any vegetarians watching right now, but I can tell you these bones might look pretty average, but they're going to be transformed into a very nourishing and healing bone broth. Bone broth is the ultimate example of nose to tail eating. I'll be utilising the ribs, knuckles, marrow bones, joint, cartilage to create a nourishing and healing dish that crosses that line between food and medicine. And I tell you what, this tastes so delicious, way tastier than medicine. You make bone broth the same way that you make any base to a soup or a stock. You combine the bones in water with a base of nutrient-rich veggies, and then you add apple cider vinegar, which helps us extract as many nutrients from the bones as we can. Bay leaves and peppercorns add some flavour, and it's really good to go. So I guess the difference between cooking a regular stock and a bone broth all comes down to time. We want to extract maximum nutrients from this, so I'm going to cook it for between 12 and 24 hours. Bone broth is a big pill in a pot, but if you're not feeding your gut with good bacteria, it's not going to have optimum effect. So get your gut in order first by creating good gut flora, as Eliza Milsom from Swiss explains. If our gut isn't, or our microbiome isn't functioning properly, then we can't actually absorb the nutrients that we're eating from our food. So it's really important to keep the gut and the bacteria in balance in order to support that. How do we know which probiotic to choose? 
So it's really interesting because I think a lot of people are under the misconception that any probiotic will actually help. However, we now know through research that bacterial strains behave really differently in the body. So it's really important for us to pick the right bacteria strain to get the desired outcome that we're looking for. With so much new information surrounding the gut, we're learning more and more about how integral it is to our health. What are some other areas of health that probiotics can support? 90% of our immune system actually resides in the gut. So I kind of like to see the gut as like a little hub of the immune system and essentially a probiotic can help to balance out the immune system. As well as when we're sick with symptoms like a cold and flu, a probiotic can help to, I guess, reduce the symptoms and also support women's urinary tract health. Irritable bowel syndrome can be managed with the use of a probiotic too. And then if we're also suffering from mild digestive complaints, a daily probiotic can help also. Fermented veggies and bone broth are rich in bacteria, just like a probiotic is. So if we can add in these into our diet every day, it just gives us that extra boost so they can help to keep the gut in balance. It's really important that we look at gut health as a long-term thing and to have longevity, we really need to have that healthy lifestyle long-term. So here it is, guys. Yay! I want you to get stuck in. Go on. Oh. It is so delicious. Oh, it is like know. a consomme, oh, one might this. say. Beautiful, light, oh. incredibly tasty, and full of goodness from the dissolved bones. It smells beautiful. I actually, this is my first ever tasting yeah. of bone broth. So get in there. Here. here we go, Joe. Oh, Stanley. I know. I live a very sheltered life. <laughs> I have a couple. I have one I cup. It. I try and have one cup a day. Yeah. Luke, talk us through those main benefits of for the gut health, cooking with the bone. OK, that's a really good thing to say. When we cook with the bone and break it down over a long period of time, amino acids are present, which can in, uh, aid digestion. In particular, we're talking about glutamine. Now, it also helps heal the intestinal barrier, which may help with conditions such as leaky gut, which irritates the mucosal lining in the intestines and interferes with the body's ability to digest properly. OK, none of that made sense. <laughs> <laughs> they are, they, they it are tastes very, good, though, mate. They're oh, very right. fancy. So Words, and this is actually yes. very delicious and I find this a, like a comforting thing to drink as well. Yep. But I want to know exactly how is this going to help me? What sorts of symptoms am I having that this is going to help with? All right. What we're thinking about is when we eat processed and refined foods, what happens is we can cause discourse in our gut bacteria. Okay. What's discourse? Just an upset tummy? Well, no, not just an upset tummy. It's more how we absorb our food. So okay. it's not just what we eat, it's what we absorb. And the inflammation. Exactly. So we're trying to reduce inflammation. Now, when we take a good probiotic or we celebrate fermented vegetables we're in one element we're creating good gut flora but then what we're doing with bone broth is we're actually sealing the gut so I, I call gut health a two-step two-step process it's healing the gut then sealing the gut so you want to have an abundance of fresh fruit and vegetables mm -hmm. and then you want to make sure that you have a really good quality probiotic celebrate fermented vegetables good and bad bacteria is what helps our gut thrive Rach, did i hear you say you're one of these a day one cup of yes. day. bone broth yes make your own Make, uh, yeah, make my own, just like what Lukey did. And I'll tell you why, for very, very good reason. What we find in bone broth is really, really special. In particular, rich in vitamins A and K, iron, fatty acids, nutrients, including calcium, magnesium and phosphorus. Now, the tissues and bones also contain collagen. Now, that's very good. It makes us look young and youthful. But it's when the collagen is cooked, it becomes gelatin, which provides the body with amino acids, which are the building blocks of proteins and also help us, our joints work and protect our entire body. Mm. Well, I'm a believer now on the back of that. Hi, <laughs> yes. Cheers to that. Cheers. Good. Well done. Hang on. Congratulations. I'm in there. Your passion is oh. overwhelming. Mate. So, hey, stick around. There's plenty more to come right here on the House of Wellness. Well, winter is just over a month away and while that means open fires, toasted marshmallows and maybe a bone broth or two... All the way, Joe. ..or a glass of red wine, uh, it can also mean colds and runny noses, right, Gerald? Yes, Joe, and it's really time to start preparing for this time of the year, even though it's a little unseasonal at the moment. It's all about preparation and it's all about helping our body absorb the nutrients from Heinz's bone broth... <laughs> from your red wine, Joe. And But the important part in all of this is that you look at some quality ways of ensuring the balance of your immune function and your immune support. 
It's a very delicate system. Mm. It needs nurturing. And welcome to my herb and garden. And cue right. the so herb garden. Look at, isn't what I love seeing is herbs in their natural state. Like these are absolutely. That's thyme in its natural state. Thyme. Yeah. I've seen that before. T H Y M E, and that's what it looks like when it's all harvested. Isn't Dry. that lovely? It's incredible. What I haven't seen is this one here. Yes. Well, now this is this is malain, which is a, a decongestant, a soothing a herb for irritated. Mm. Um, and you've dropped it everywhere. Sorry. That's right. No, no, that's fine. <laughs> um, for, for irritation. So for the back of your throat when it becomes irritated and you cough, soothing that is part of the relief that we get. So we don't want to suppress a cough. We want to soothe it and have things come back to as normal as possible. What are some of the other major components when we do get a cold or, or we feel the flu coming on? What mm -hmm. should we be taking? Well... Supporting immune function is, is a separate issue. We've talked about that a lot today with probiotics. But when any symptoms arise, you're holding marshmallow. Mm. Marshmallow, even the name sounds soothing, doesn't it? It's a demulcent. It helps break up congestion and soothe again irritated surfaces. Another one is Ellie Campaign, which we don't have here. Ellie Campaign hastens recovery. So it means you get over things far, far better. And they come in a combination which is quite an outstanding way of giving holistic support to your ability to get back to where you want to be. There is nothing worse than that swallowing knives sensation when you have a sore throat. What's going to help with that? In sore throats, we look at sage and we look at some licorice, again, soothing. And the sort of things that are available, usually in spray form. So if the sore throat's often the second thing. So you get a nasal congestion, sore throat down onto your chest. Now, with all of those things, you may need both. You may need the sore throat and the, the combination of the herbs in the mixture. That herbal combination is actually ideal for children as well because it doesn't have anything artificial in mm, it. I was going to say, very, they, very might, soothing. they must need something a lot, uh, yep. a lot less intense. Yes, a gentle flavour, but always get advice. The secret to these things, whether it's a sore throat or a cough, we're all different. Mm. Get some advice from your healthcare practitioner so you know exactly the best thing to do. Absolutely, and the A to Z of vitamins is brought to you by Bioceuticals. Your choice for high quality, practitioner only, nutritional and therapeutic supplements. Well, a few weeks ago, we had Nat and Steve from the Green Street Juice Company, uh, Joe, here in Melbourne, and they have whipped up a special chocolate drink, health mm. drink, and they've made a house of wellness. So, yeah. labelled for us, we're heading into to, uh, Easter. How so, uh, and allow me to quickly check. Good news, raw cacao, that's what we want. We want to use the real stuff. Activated almonds, water, maple syrup, cinnamon and vanilla. Oh, that mm. is delicious. Mm. Get the tick from you, Heinzie, or not? Oh, mate, absolutely. If this is looking after yourself, then sign me up for a bucket load. OK, I've got, I've got a confession to make. Of course, uh, we're at a time when we're spending a lot of time with family mm -hmm. and friends. We're having beautiful big old feasts. I will be overindulgent. <laughs> there is no chance that I'm not putting on the elasticated pants and just eating <laughs> until I need to have a sleep okay. in the afternoon. And then I'll start again. So what do we do? Because obviously we're not going to deny ourselves. Yes. What do we do after that to regain some balance when we know we have overindulged? Well, before we even give you some tips and tricks, I'd say don't feel guilty. So many people I was about go to say that. Do, do I look guilty? Yeah. <laughs> but there are people who are, you know, following a healthy lifestyle yeah. who then when they go off the wagon, they start to punish themselves. Mm. So first and foremost, get rid of that negative self-talk that pops into your head. So have a blowout over Easter, is that what you're And saying? forgive yourself for it, because mm. rather than having a bad weekend turning into a bad month or a bad year, just be done with it, enjoy it, cherish the food and move on. But and I have it's a good, tip. And it's good for the soul. It's really good for the soul. Sharing with friends and family, that's what life is about. But then let's get serious. Yeah, so how do we rebalance? <laughs> how do we go back? Because you do tend to feel yeah. it a bit... You feel a bit icky afterwards. Right. So how do I then start to feel healthy again? Have you guys heard the term intermittent fasting? I do it all the time. I love it. Okay. I mean, intermittently I do it. Now, <laughs> there's varying <laughs> levels of intermittent fasting. So the good news is that you can adjust it according to you and your lifestyle because there is no one-size-fits-all approach. But in its, I guess, strongest form, what we'd be doing is an 18-hour fast with a six hour eating window. Now, if that sounds crazy to mm -hmm. you, Joe, my best tip for those at home is actually to have dinner around five or 6 p.m. and then don't eat breakfast until lunchtime the next day. And I'll tell you why that's a bit of a cheat's way of doing it. Because you're actually asleep for most of the time. So when you're asleep, you're fasting. Okay. So have an early dinner and then a later lunch. And also when you start eating again, obviously you yes. want it to be whole foods and leafy greens and all those sorts of things that are going to nourish you. Yeah. Yes. I think overall, getting back 
back to just normal eating not feeling guilty yeah. getting back to you just your meat your veg your you know your good complex carbohydrate source and i think it's also to be um important to note that fasting and intermittent fasting is not for everyone so i know personally if i fast for too long i start to feel anxious and a little bit stressed and my body reacts in a certain way yeah so You've i've got, got to, listen to really to listen to my body definitely and just um and just be mindful. Do Good what chat works to have. for you guys. I like it, uh, Heinzy. Now, these are a one-off, but uh, go and check out the Green Street Juice Company. You can do a fast, as uh, Heinzy was just talking about. Go to houseofwellness.com.au for all the info on our show. And there, Joe, you'll find the details of how to enter mm. our Sukhavati Bali competition. We're giving away two double passes. That's for two couples to spend seven nights at Sukhavati, the health retreat in Bali. You know that I'm passionate yes, about. Yes, how many times can I, I mean someone else, <laughs> enter that? Well, we want to get you there, Joe. We want to get the whole team. We need to do a show for Done. Us. We will. Oh. At some stage, you'll enjoy all of the treatments. Uh, you're going to see the doctor, yoga, meditation course, uh, massages, diet, health, the whole package. Uh, head to houseofwellness.com to check it out. You also fly Jetstar Business. Thanks to the team, the team at Jetstar that. for that. They'll look after you. Great way to get up to uh, Bali. And don't forget to tune into the House of Wellness radio show every Sunday. And as always, thanks to our very good friends at Chemist Warehouse. We'll see you next time. Yay! Cheers, guys. Oh, second chance for the day. There you go. <laughs> Every time.